they're developing some good leads. We're working closely with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We're working with our statewide prosecutor, our federal partners, the ATF and the FBI, and our local prosecutor, Susie Lopez. Furthermore, it was found that the shooters are members of or affiliated with rival gangs of Jones that go by ATK and 1200. <laughs>Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, make sure you check us out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash hookah anonymous underscore. You guys been telling us to create one for the longest, so we recently created a community where we will upload videos that we can't share on YouTube due to their guidelines, but we'll also be dropping the latest to their first behind the scenes information that you wouldn't find anywhere else on our socials. So make sure you become a member, and after you do that, head over to our official Instagram page at hookahanonymous underscore and follow us there. Now without further ado, let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, it's official y'all. <laughs> They are currently suspects arrested and being charged for the passing of Jacksonville, Florida rapper Julio Fulio. Now, I know that since he passed, there's been a whole bunch of controversy surrounding the situation where it's been a mystery on whether Fulio is still alive or not. This have come after someone from Julio Fulio's IG account have still been posted on social media even after it's been claimed that he was unalive. So the fans have been confused because we see that it was a funeral for him and his peers have sent their condolences, but then his IG page is still posted. Now I can't blame people for not knowing whether his passing was real or not, because these days you just never know what's real and what's not. However, I think now we can put all the theories about Fulio still being alive to rest because they have finally made arrests in charging three people with the passing of Julio Fulio. Altogether, they've told us that it was a total of five people that had involvement in his passing that they've gathered so far. But they were only able to seek out three out of those five people as of right now. They also had a conference about the suspects being captured, which was headed by Jacksonville Sheriff TK Waters. So if you thought Fulio was still alive, here's all the proof you need, because if he was, nobody would be getting arrested for his passing. Now that we got that out the way, we're going to get into everything we know concerning what we've been told about this incident. They actually told us a lot and mentioned who else they feel are behind the passing of Fulio and mentioned members of ATK and 1200 having involvement. Now let me say this y'all, this is about the second or third conference about body dropping that I've seen personally where ATK's name was mentioned. So let me just say this, I don't know when and I don't know how but I'm almost 100% sure that a RICO charge is coming at some point in time for ATK. I don't wish jail or death on anybody, but let's deal with common sense for just one second. These guys' names have been mixed in a lot of shootings and bodies dropping, and we have yet to see the police take action, despite them always name dropping them and accusing them of having their hands in certain crimes. Some of you may think that it's just because the police may not have enough evidence to prosecute them, but if you know anything about the feds and how they play, all they're doing is being patient. They strike when you least expect, and if you think they're going to knowingly accuse these guys of having their hands in crimes, especially bodies, not do anything about it, you're sadly mistaken. It's just a matter of time. However, we're going to get into the suspects in the conference held, as well as the 4K footage that was released concerning the passing of Julio Fulio. Before we do all that, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so we can get this video into the algorithm. And if you're not subscribed to the platform already, make sure you do so now. Let's get into it. The investigation would later reveal that the three armed shooters were Sean Gaithright, Richard Murphy, and Davion Murphy. Now, three of the five suspects have recently been arrested for the passing of Julio Fulio, Alicia Andrews, Isaiah Chance, and Sean Gaithright. According to the conference held by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, detectives used surveillance footage, license plate readers, and phone logs to identify two vehicles used, which linked them back to the suspects they feel had involvement in the shooting. Allegedly, Alicia Andrews was at the birthday celebration for Julio Fulio the night he was unalive, 
and she's the one that drops his location to the other two, Sean and Isaiah, that travel all the way from Jacksonville to Tampa, and that's where her involvement stemmed from in the incident. Got me drinking, cuz. I don't even drink, cuz. Uh, Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm assuming this is why they said they had phone logs, which that may be what proved that she was there and in contact with the other two men to drop her location. This may include text messages, calls, and GPS location tracking, etc. Now aside from that, they also have surveillance footage from the hotel, in which we already knew they would have, but this surveillance is actually of 4K quality. Now if y'all remember the woman who claimed to work at the hotel, and did an interview with Ratchet Hood TV, she did already tell us that the hotel had very high quality cameras and we can expect to see it when the time comes. And that's exactly what we've seen. During the conference, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office released a clearer version of the hotel surveillance footage where it also shows us where the first shooting initiated. In the surveillance, you can see Fulio at what appears to be the entrance of the hotel and the passenger side of the car. Someone began shooting at the car, which prompted the driver to drive off trying to flee but he was met by three more shooters by the exit who fired into the car as well. I'm assuming this is where Fulio was hit the most as they surrounded the car and shot into it simultaneously. Sheriff Waters also confirmed that Fulio was the passenger despite everyone thinking he was the driver and that's where we seen the most bullet holes. But I told y'all before that after we seen the picture of him looking like he was trying to get into the back seat to escape the shots, it's almost impossible for him to have been the driver by the way his body was positioned. Now for the guys that thought going into a hotel parking lot to carry this out was a smart idea, they were sadly mistaken. And not only do they have the surveillance in 4K, but they said they also have license plate readers that trace back to the suspects they believe had involved. In the surveillance, you could see that the shooters were on foot getting into position, which means they probably parked elsewhere thinking they were outsmarting the police. But if you came all the way from Jacksonville, no matter where you parked, I'm sure law enforcement went back and tracked whatever car they felt was involved by using license plate readers, tolls, and other advanced technology they got to trace it back to the suspects. Now although they showed us the footage in 4K, it still makes me wonder where did Fulio's girlfriend car come from and how it ended up where it was. The surveillance didn't show us that part, but we seen the crime scene and it showed that her car was adjacent to his and it was being investigated but for some reason it was left on the scene and not taken by law enforcement which is weird usually if a car is involved in the crime it's taken in for investigation we've seen a video of her taking things out the car and evidence markers being present on it so why wasn't it taken strange now aside from the car jacksonville sheriff's office dropped some interesting information about the suspects and who they're affiliated with leading them to believe that Fulio's passing was a joint operation involving two groups that were rivals of Fulio. Sheriff Waters said that the shooters are members or affiliates of rival gangs of Julio Fulio's, including ATK and 1200 members. Furthermore, it was found that the shooters are members of or affiliated with rival gangs of Jones that go by ATK and 1200. Jones was part of the six block gang. Detectives believe that the ATK and the 1200 worked together to target Jones as part of an ongoing feud in Jacksonville. Now Ratchet TV has been very adamant about ATK having involvement in it. As y'all seen, he was going back and forth with ATK Keys and take shots about the involvement on YouTube and people thought he was crazy. Now you have Jacksonville sheriffs telling you that ATK and 1200 members does in fact have involvement in Fulio's demise. At least that's what they think. So call him crazy, but it looks like now it's some type of validation to what he's been trying to say the whole time. Now it's deeper than just a blogger saying it because you have law enforcement saying it as well. 
Keep in mind, if law enforcement is saying it, there's a reason, and they have some sort of evidence to back up their claims, else not, they wouldn't say it publicly. And now looking at everything, Young and Ace didn't make it any better by dropping at least three songs dissing Julio Fulio and making it seem like they had involvement in it whether they really did or not. As I always tell y'all, street business should always be left in the street. Why are you trying to convince the world that you got get back or you the reason behind certain situations? Just always remember that law enforcement is always watching despite people thinking that they're not. Also, if y'all remember when the case first happened, the same sheriff came out and told us that they're working with the FBI and federal partners on a case after Fulio was on the lot. They're developing some good leads. We're working closely with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We're working with our statewide prosecutor, our federal partners, the ATF and the FBI, and our local prosecutor, Susie Lopez. And I can guarantee you that we're going to be following up and making arrests in that case. We're looking at the social media. We're working with our Jacksonville partners and getting intelligence on that. So uh, definitely all top of our priority. I told y'all before that that should have told us that the feds was already involved because they don't just get involved every time someone is on the lob. There's a reason the feds was involved in working with Jacksonville Sheriff Office, and I believe it's because it was already an investigation going on at the time of his demise. Now this could mean that it was a possible RICO charge for either side, whether it was ATK or KTA, but he did point out that they were working with their federal agencies, and that was all we needed to know. If you're a part of ATK or affiliated in any way, if I was you, I would be very low key and concerned because it's been a few times now where these guys have been called out in a body dropping by law enforcement. Like I stated earlier, don't think the police is just sitting there and not doing anything about it with them having knowledge. And anytime you know that you up to no good and the police are aware of who you are, it's never a good look. So that's pretty much it, man. As more updates come out, We'll update you guys on what's going on. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.